Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess and welcome back to our lecture on the introduction to GIS and to ArcGIS. Now last lecture we discussed uh, some of the cool things you could do with GIS and in this lecture I'd like to discuss some of the software packages that you use for that and in particular how to use ArcMap. Now I'm going to start out by pointing out that there are alternatives to ArcGIS and often they are cheaper, sometimes even free. Most of the major alternatives cost as much as ArcGIS though. Now this list shows you a few of the free or cheap alternatives and some of the some of them are really nice too. And it's just important to point out, you know, I, I recently had an, ex, an experience with a fellow who called me. He was complaining that he couldn't get ArcGIS to do this particular thing. He wanted to calculate the volume of a rock pile and he just couldn't get ArcGIS to do it, but he found a free tool online that would do it just fine. And so free tools are sometimes available, sometimes are great options. However, these free tools are usually very specialized in what you do. I mean, you can find them, but they'll only do that one thing. The advantage of ArcGIS is that it does almost everything. And for this fellow who was contacting me, it turns out that ArcGIS actually would do what he wanted, but the process was not nearly as user-friendly and easy as his free specialized tool. Now, Quantum GIS, also called QGIS, this this is probably the top alternative to ArcGIS right now. It's free. It's going to be a. It is a big player in the GIS world. I know lots of small businesses and government organizations that use this software, and several of my clients have asked me to learn it so I could write tools for them. So QGIS is a good one, but ArcGIS really is the major player in the GIS world. Now, I like ArcGIS, and I specialize in using it, but my job really isn't to sell ArcGIS or Esri to you. Um, I recognize there are lots of alternative products out there. Like most people who use ArcGIS, I spend a lot of time angry at it. And for most things, though, ArcGIS is an excellent product. It can do far more things than any other GIS software I've seen with more types of data. And while it's sometimes hard to figure out how to do a particular function, there usually is a way. ArcGIS also has several excellent programming environments available that allow you to create your own custom tools. It has a really enthusiastic user community who will often give away their custom tools for free. Now, I do think there are better remote sensing and imagery analysis software packages available. If you want to analyze satellite or aircraft imagery and do that kind of complex remote sensing stuff, there are other software packages that are really, uh, they got the edge on, on ArcGIS. But ArcGIS is improving in that area. Uh, you, if you're interested, you might look at Erdas Imagine, ER Mapper, Idrisi, or ENVI. Those are, those are some of the top of the line remote sensing softwares. Now, ArcGIS, it's not a single software program, and that's a little confusing sometimes. It's a large project. It includes a lot of different software. It's produced by this country, ESRI, Environmental Systems Research Institute, and ArcGIS includes a lot of different components. First up, ArcGIS Desktop. That's what we're going to be using in this class. Desktop is a primary mapping and analysis tool that is installed on individual computers and workstations. And but understand that ArcGIS really covers a lot more than this. There's ArcGIS Pro. This is a new product that's come out recently, and it's going to eventually replace desktop. Uh, it already replicates a lot of the desktop functions. It, it actually falls short in a few others, and that's why we're sticking with desktop for now. But the future of Esri software is in ArcGIS Pro. There's ArcGIS Server. It's used to connect with complex geodatabases and also a way to to kind of link those geodatabases out over the internet so that you can download them and use web services to interact with them. There's ArcGIS Online and Portal. These are almost the same. They become in more and more important components of ArcGIS. They let you keep your data and tools in the cloud, and lots of businesses and agencies use these products to distribute maps to their customers or to deliver mobile GIS functionality to their employees. Now, online and portal are basically the same. The difference is that Esri hosts ArcGIS on their own system, and portal is something that you or your employer host on your system. Now, there's ArcGIS for smartphones, for tablets, and mobile devices, lots of different apps that you can plug into these things. They provide simple GIS functions on your phone or your tablet. They're usually free to download, but they have to connect with an ArcGIS server installation somewhere. You might have heard of Collector. That's been a really popular one lately. 
There's ArcGIS Engine. It's and it's, this is interesting. It's pretty much ArcGIS Desktop, but without the user interface. There's no program that you start. All it is is software components. And if you're a developer or a code writer, you can use all these software components to build your own software. And it contains all the internal ArcGIS objects. And if you're ambitious, you could create your own version of ArcGIS Desktop, all using these internal components. So ArcGIS Earth, for those of you who've used Google Earth, this is pretty similar. It's tailored to Esri data. It also has a lot more analytical tools that are not available in Google Earth. And then there's just a whole bunch more. If you go to this link, you'll, you know, Esri's always coming out with new little apps and new variations on the product. And ArcGIS, as a suite of tools, keeps getting larger and larger. Just a couple of examples here. <clears throat> Here's some ArcGIS Online examples. This is a neat one that shows Normandy. Uh, it's got this little slider in the middle. You move it back and forth, and you can see Normandy today and see the same site uh, right during the bombing during World War II. There's a similar one here. It looks at landslides and is able to take LiDAR data and, and show visually where landslides have occurred, sometimes places where you really can't even see it in the imagery. But... That when you actually look at the ground surface with LiDAR, this, these landslides really jump out. A lot of Forest Service data, and this, this is actually from CAL FIRE, but you know, definitely a lot of fire-related data. This was the Camp Fire in California a few years ago. Uh, it, it, ArcGIS Online, this was made for the homeowners there. They could go on the CAL FIRE site, click on their address, and see what had happened to their home. There's this uh, wildfire activity map. It's kind of neat. Uh, there's this link up here if you want to go to it. It it shows fires that are currently going on plus fires that are recent going back uh, three or four months or so. Some of these things are pretty nice too. Uh, some ArcGIS online data, but not all, can be opened directly in ArcMap. So that one I just showed you uh, of the wildfire activity, that's a layer that you can actually bring straight into ArcMap and do actual analysis with it. And those other examples, we're just looking at it in web browsers. And then here's ArcGIS Pro. That, like I said, this is going to be eventually replacing ArcMap. It's different in several ways. It's a 64-bit software, whereas ArcMap is only 32-bit. This means it only installs on 64-bit operating systems, but it also lets it uh, handle much larger data sets than ArcMap. And it combines both 3D and traditional mapping functions, lets you have multiple maps, multiple layouts, and all this stuff will make more sense when we're, when we're actually looking at the ArcMap interface. There's a few other differences. The programming language it really targets is called Python 3. ArcMap uses Python 2, and there's minor differences there. And it's also designed to be more closely integrated with online and portal data. So this is a piece of software that's really designed to be connected into the Internet. Uh, ArcMap will do it just fine, but it's not tailored for it. Now let's discuss ArcGIS. So here's a little example. We see there's ArcGIS. That's the larger family. We have Pro. We have Earth Online. All these various components. And then we have Desktop. Desktop is one of the components of ArcMap. Now, within desktop, there are three license levels. We call these basic, standard, and advanced. Now, uh, on as a student, and if you're working with, uh, you know, BLM, Park Service, uh, BIA, or Forest Service, you know, all of, all of these sources have the advanced level. Now, if you wind up going to working for a small nonprofit, there's a fair chance that they can't afford the advanced level, so you'll only be using basic or standard. So I really want you to understand the differences between these. Um, basic used to be called the arc view level, and you can do almost everything you want to do. Standard lets you start to get into more fancy database functions. And then advanced has a few of the really advanced analytical tools. Now, we have a document, uh, the ArcGIS functionality matrix. I actually have a version of this for 10.7 that's in your documents folder. So it's important that you take a look at this, and you'll, you'll, it'll, they'll show you the tools and what levels they are available at. And all the tools also have help files that'll tell you what license level they go to. So for example, this is a picture of that 10.7 functionality matrix. You can see at the top that 
Uh, I got a few of the tools listed up there, the pan, zoom, and rotate, the find X, Y location, the zoom to full study area. These tools are all available at all three license levels, basic, standard, and advanced. But there are a number of tools that are not available at all three license levels. For example, this advanced cartography tool called Store Multiple Representations. It's only available at the standard and the advanced. And then there's a few tools that are only available at advanced. So it's important that you know it. I mean, if you are working with the Forest Service and you get really used to a tool, and then you go to work for a nonprofit, you may not have that tool available. So I want you to understand this. And I want you to be able to look at this file, know where to look it up. And like I said, you can also see it in the help files. If you are running a tool and you click the little help button, you look at the top of those help screens and they'll tell you what license levels that tool works at. Okay, so that's license levels. Now there's also something called extensions. These are th things that add on to what ArcMap or ArcGIS will do. Uh, the spatial analyst is really popular. That lets you do raster analysis. And we're going to talk a lot about raster versus vector data in the next lecture on data types. Um, 3D analyst is really designed for a three-dimensional analysis. Uh, you're on a road, you want to know what in the landscape is visible from any point on the road. They call that a view shed, and that's a 3D function. Calculating the volume of a, of a mountain, that's a 3D function. Geostatistical analyst is for complex statistical functions. Network analyst is what, what you use for finding the shortest path. Network Analyst does some cool other things, too. Um, lots of other tools. Well, there's several other extensions just available from Esri, and then plenty more that are available from third-party developers. Now, when you have an extension, especially if you have an extension that Esri produced, you usually have to turn it on in ArcMap, and this is where you do it. You hit that Customize menu item, then go to Extensions. Then you just check the extensions you want to turn on. Now, desktop licensing. We discussed basic versus standard versus advanced. Now, it shouldn't be an issue you need to worry about in this class, but be aware of it in case you use ArcGIS at uh, different institutions or smaller organizations especially. Larger organizations usually have a certain number of ArcGIS licenses available and separate licenses for basic, standard, advanced, and for different extensions. That way they can install the software on every machine in their organization, but each machine will still need to check the license out when they start the software. This means that if an organization only has 10 licenses, then only 10 people can use ArcGIS at a time, even if 100 people have it installed on their computers. Now, extension licensing. The extension that you have may or may not require a license. Like I said, if it's an Esri extension, it probably does require a license. If it's a third-party extension, it might not. Most Esri extensions require licenses, and therefore you have to specifically turn them on using this extensions window. And doing this causes ArcGIS to check the license out. If no licenses are available, then ArcGIS won't let you turn on the extension. Now we're going to use Spatial Analyst in some of, the, some of this course, so you'll want to be able to know how to turn that on when you have to. Now, some third-party extensions require licenses, but most don't. And if the extension doesn't require a license, you're probably not going to see it in this extensions window. Okay, next up is the ArcGIS desktop components. Now, recall we've been talking about ArcGIS, and that was a large suite of software. It had several components itself. It had Pro, it had ArcGIS Online, it had Portal, it had Engine. Uh, ArcGIS Desktop was one component of the ArcGIS suite of products. Now, Desktop itself has four components. Uh, being it's just one component of ArcGIS, there's four components in ArcGIS Desktop, and each of these is a separate program. First, there's ArcMap, there's Arc Catalog, Arc Globe, and Arc Scene. And so now we see a larger expanded tree of the ArcGIS suite of products. Now, we're going to be using desktop, so we'll be getting to know ArcMap and ArcCatalog very well. We won't do so much with Scene and Globe, but uh, ArcMap and ArcCatalog are incredibly powerful products. Now, just a quick clarification. We've been talking about the components of ArcGIS, and then we also talked about license levels and extensions. The license levels apply to all these different components of ArcGIS, as well to the extensions. So you can get 3D Analyst for Desktop, for Pro, for uh, Engine, for a Server, etc. These levels and extensions are all available at 
multiple components of ArcGIS. Now let's take a closer look at the desktop components, what we're going to be using. First up, ArcMap. This is where most of the ArcGIS desktop work is done, and this is where we're going to spend most of our time in this class. Arc Catalog is used for reviewing and organizing data. And it's similar to Windows Explorer, Windows File Explorer, if you've seen that, but it's made for spatial data. Now this slide shows Arc Catalog on the left and Windows File Explorer on the right. Both Arc Catalog and Windows Explorer are open to the same folder on the hard drive. Now notice that in Windows Explorer, that many spatial data sets are actually composed of multiple files or folders. Arc Catalog simplifies them by showing each spatial data set as a single object. We're going to talk about more about how spatial data can be complicated this way in the next lecture on data types. Uh, but right here we're just getting an introduction to Catalog. Now, our catalog is nice because it gives you spatial and tabular views of the data, has a lot of analytic tools available, and sometimes people run analytic tools from our catalog rather than ArcMap, just so that ArcMap doesn't get bogged down. Well, this is starting to change since Ed Esri rewrote a lot of the ArcMap tools to run in the background, but it's very common to have both catalog and ArcMap open at the same time. Arc Scene is used to display 3D surfaces as if they lay on a flat plane. You can look at it from this kind of perspective angle. This tool is fun to play with, but honestly it's kind of buggy and slow too. I use it occasionally to make 3D illustrations like you see here, but half the time the export doesn't even work right. Also tends to crash sometimes. Now, Arc Scene is part of 3D Analyst, so you're going to have to turn on the 3D Analyst extension in order to be able to use it. Arc Globe is used to display 3D surfaces as if they lay on the surface of the planet. It's really a lot like Google Earth, but with a bunch more tools available. Maybe a little less user friendly, too. Now, like Arc Scene, Arc Globe is part of 3D Analyst. It's only available if you have 3D Analyst installed. Now, Arc Globe can show you data from a similar perspective as Arc Scene as well. Okay, I think that'll do as an introduction to the suite of ArcGIS software. So uh, next lecture we'll dive into ArcMap and see how that, that uh, software is constructed and the things that you can expect, the buttons, etc. that you'll be working with. Alright, thanks so much. We'll see you soon.